My Lords, I am pleased to have the opportunity to raise an issue not contained in the gracious speech, but one which I believe is long, outstanding and urgent, and one I believe the Government could act on now by a simple amendment <coughs> to either the Criminal Justice and Courts Bill or the Serious Crime Bill. I hope the Noble Lord the Minister will give this careful consideration. I am focusing on the need to do more to protect the rights and welfare of children and vulnerable adults detained or interviewed by the police. I declare an interest as the President of the National Appropriate Adult Network, a charity and membership organisation which supports the development of effective appropriate adult policy and practice. And I would particularly like to thank its Chief Executive, Chris Bath, for his expert advice and briefing on this issue. My Lords, by way of background, under the 1984 Police and Criminal Evidence Act Codes of Practice, when detaining or interviewing a child or mentally disordered or mentally vulnerable adult, the police must secure an appropriate adult to protect their rights and welfare. The term mentally vulnerable includes but is not limited to people with mental ill health, a learning disability or autistic spectrum disorder. If the police have any doubts, my lords, any doubts about the mental state or capacity of a detainee, they may not continue with procedures such as fingerprinting, DNA swabs, intimate searches or interviews without an appropriate <coughs> adult being present. The appropriate adult role conducted effectively is complex and demanding and includes a multitude of tasks, but it's absolutely crucial. Where parents or carers are unavailable, unsuitable or unwilling, a statutory duty requires youth offending teams to ensure provision of appropriate adults for children, whether through paid or voluntary staff. However, my Lords, there is no such statutory duty to ensure the provision of appropriate adults for mentally vulnerable adults, and this is a key point that I will return to in a short while. However, first, my, my first area of concern is in relation to children. My Lords, in 2012, Joe Lawton, a 17-year-old boy, took his own life. His father found him dead in a police charge sheet at his feet. Two days earlier, he was held in a police cell overnight on suspicion of drunk driving. In 2011, 17 year old Edward Thornber was caught with 50 pence worth of cannabis. Distraught at the thought of life with a criminal record, he hanged himself. My laws, these are children who were treated as adults in police custody and were not entitled to an appropriate adult. The case of Hughes Cousins Chang, another 17 year old, led to a judicial review. The Home Secretary, rightly, amended the PACE codes of practice without appeal extending provision to 17-year-olds and rectifying a long-standing anomaly. The Home Secretary's action is welcomed. However, if we are to avoid such tragedies in future, there are three key issues which still need urgent action. Firstly, with more 17-year-olds arrested than 10 to 16-year-olds combined, funding is desperately needed. Seven months after the change to PACE Code C, no additional funding has been given to local, local government. Secondly, the PACE Act must be amended to remove anomalies where 17-year-old boys and girls continue to be treated as adult, adults in several critical respects, including a lack of parental consent around intimate body cavity searches, no requirement to transfer them to local authority accommodation post-charge. The Criminal Justice and Courts Bill will ensure 17-year-olds have an appropriate adult for the purposes of youth cautions and youth custodial cautions. I welcome the Ministry of Justice uh, in the fact that it's moved so quickly to address this issue. I would, it would make eminent sense for the Home Secretary and the Home Office to follow suit. Thirdly, too often children across the country are detained in cells, contrary to Section 38.6 of PACE, which places a statutory duty on the police to affect the transfer of children, unless it's impractical for certain defined reasons. And local authorities must accommodate them under the 89 Children's Act. This can cause psychological damage to the children, it's putting unnecessary pressure on custody suites and increasing the risk of costly remands. There are, of course, the odd exceptions, my laws, but the system seems to have broken down nationwide and there appears to be no accountability. This is a cross departmental issue, but one I would expect the Home Office to take the lead on. Now I turn to mentally vulnerable adults, my laws, and here I fear we're heading towards a crisis which needs urgent action now by the government. At any given time, one in six British adults, 8 million people is experiencing a diagnosable mental health problem. Almost 40% of people in contact with probation service have a mental health condition, and it's even higher in prisons. And up to 30% who offend have learning disabilities or difficulties that interferes with their ability to cope with the criminal justice system. Yet my noble friend Lord Bradley's landmark report in 2009 noted that an analysis of 21,000 
police custody records found an appropriate adult was used in only 38 cases. He had expected at least 3,000 cases. This, the fact is the lack of a statutory provision for vulnerable adults means that appropriate trained uh, that means that trained appropriate adults for this group are often unavailable or provision is limited. In many areas, services are non-existent. My Lords, the Government must be congratulated for investing an extra £25 million this year into services to identify mentally vulnerable people in police stations and to ensure appropriate referrals. This will be a great support for custody sergeants and I welcome the commitment to extend these liaison and diversion services to every custody suite uh, in England by 2017. My Lords, it is already the case that where there is no organised service, the search for an appropriate adult can make significant demands on police time. At busy times, police can be impelled not to identify an individual's vulnerability at all. And if the police are discouraged from identifying vulnerability due to poor provision of appropriate adults, it may present an unwelcome barrier to them referring to liaison and diversion. As things stand, the problem actually is set to worsen dramatically. The non-statutory nature of appropriate adult services for vulnerable adults means that those areas with a service are defenceless in the face of budget cuts. My Lords, in the short term, immediate action is needed to prevent the loss of existing services, many of which are delivered by committed volunteers. But this cannot be at the expense of the proper solution, placing appropriate adult provision for mentally vulnerable adults on a statutory footing. I hope the noble Lord, the Minister, will be able to respond positively to my concerns and we need to see a clear commitment by the Government to take action within this parliamentary session to tackle these important issues. I fear, my Lords, without such action, we are heading towards crisis and placing some of the most vulnerable people in our communities at serious risk. Uh, my Lords, <clears throat> I shall focus my remarks on the section of the Great